Hey everybody, welcome back to the Diver Guy channel. And today we're going over 201B, back dive pike. And we've got everything from bad to the best. And we're gonna see what changes as you go along in your diving career to get to the highest level. Back dive pike is an interesting dive because it's a dive that's used at all levels of diving. If you're a JO diver or age group diver, all the way up into professional or Olympic level diving, a lot of them use it for their synchro. And you'll see that in this video. So let's start with uh, this first diver. We've got girl on one meter working on her oscillations there. She goes up. So you can see she's oscillating a lot. And then when she goes up for that last oscillation before she leaves the board, you can see her, her hips are already back. And ideally, you'd want to see a straight line from the ankles through the hips all the way up to the shoulders. And you can see she's already kind of falling back. As she comes back down for that arm circle, you can see she starts to fall away from the board. And her angle upon leaving the board is really far out. So she's just leaning back. She's falling off the board. And she doesn't quite get all the way into her pike either. She feels that it's rotating too quickly because she leaned back and it's falling, that she doesn't go all the way to her toes for the pike. Another aspect of this that's important to look at is that her arm circle doesn't get past the ears. She stops it short because she's leaning back. If she were standing upright, her arms would be at about 11 o'clock. It's in front of the ears or maybe in line with the ears and it just falls away. This is a balance issue. She has a great leg drive up for the pike. She's got great straight legs off the board. She looks like she can hit the entry, but it's just falling away. All right, let's move on to the second person. Another person down on one meter, oscillating. And yeah, this is from a different angle, different side of the pool. And you can see right off the bat, it just looks late. So she's going up into that last oscillation. She doesn't pick her arms up all the way to be straight above her head. She kind of keeps them wide, like into a Y position. And then the arm circle starts very early. Ideally, what you want to do is wait to circle the arms until you're already squatting. But with her, you can see her arms are already back behind her body as she starts coming back down, which means her arms are going to get through very early. And it's going to end up going back typically, which she did okay with the distance on this, but the, the pop off the board is very late. So what you'd like to see here is still keeping your shoulders over the toes more off the board and extending up more towards the ceiling and not backwards. And then going back for the pike with her chest a little bit more rather than bringing the toes all the way up to 12 o'clock, even past 12 o'clock. Both this girl and the first person don't fully press out of the dive either. You'll see as people get more advanced, they actually press and slide out of the pike and they don't come over the top. You see how open her arms are or the arm movement to the water. It's just, it takes the longest that way and it pulls your back out of alignment going into an archy position. And since she touched high, it just rolls over onto the next person. Let's see how this one improves. Let's start with the board work and the oscillations. She has a little bit of a crow hop there, which I'm not a huge fan of. And as she's doing that arm circle, her shoulders are dropping in front a bit, and instead of popping straight up, she lets her shoulders roll backwards. So when she's leaving the board, she's leaning back a bit, and her upper and thoracic spine are a little bit too arched. You want to stay a little bit more hollow off the board. She brought, pops the legs up pretty well. You can see the toes aren't very pointed, and the knees are look a little bit bent. But after she touches or comes close to touching the toes, she starts to grab her hands, and you definitely want to finish the press before you grab your hands. This is a common thing for people that think they need to get back for the water quick when you have plenty of drop time. Where she's touching her toes, she's at the peak of her dive, and she's in a rush to get all the way out for the entry. So what you'd like to see is after she touches the toes, she slides her hands out, and keeps looking at the toes before reaching back for the water and entry. You see that slight lean on the start and the head back on the out with the quick out leads to her going out pretty far and she does an okay job swimming for the entry. You can see the swim bubbles come up there at the end. So that's definitely a step up from the previous girls. Okay, so next we actually get to um, some more professional level diving. This is a pair for a synchro event and you can see the synchro is off, but let's just talk about the person that's closest to us you can see on his start, he does a much better job of keeping his body stacked. 
which what I mean by that is the ankles, hips, and shoulders, all the way up to the hands almost, are in a great alignment. It's almost you can draw a straight line from all those body points. His gaze is back towards the board. His head isn't up, he's not rolling back at all. His eyes could be down closer towards where the fulcrum is to help him get a better pop up, which he does. He touches his toes well and slides out. This is the first example of a proper press. You can see that he gets all the way out straight and he's still looking at his toes. His head is still in, so he's hollow, but his arms are down on his thighs and then he reaches back for the water. The issue with him right now is that he actually held his head there too long and kept his chin ducked as he reached back for the entry, which took him over. I'm sure he felt that in the beginning. He thought he was going to go over because he, he was a little bit back and he didn't put his chest forward for the press. He brought his legs up a little bit too high, so he just rolled over a little bit. Let's go on to the next group. These guys are actually twins, which is really interesting. I've never seen that before for synchro diving. So let's talk about the person that's closest to us again. It's easiest to see and we'll break down his form here. Um, pretty good oscillations. He doesn't bring his arms all the way up for the arm circle, which maybe it's just a preference thing. I, I'd like to see people bring their arms all the way up above their head before circling. Um, his feet are way over the board. You would like to see him on his toes a little bit more. He's kind of having to lean back a little bit. He has pretty good alignment coming off. Great reach with the hands back behind his ears and his ankles, hips, and shoulders are in alignment, which I love. That's step one right there. He pops up his legs amazing and slides out very well. But you can see where his body is pointed. He's pointing at 10 o'clock, which I don't exactly like. I'd like to see it a little bit higher up. That way he doesn't have to arch as much and look back with his head as hard. He gets away with it pretty well. He goes in very well, but it's kind of a false straight. Whereas he's going in short, but he kind of pulls it to make it look straight, which is a great adjustment on his part. It just doesn't look as good in the air. So that's just a little minor thing. Great press, looks back well, grabs the entry, rip entry. All right, now this is another pairing for... Great Britain in the 2012 Olympics. Let's talk about Pete Waterfield. He's the guy closest to us on the oscillations. It looks great. He's got an, actually an interesting thing where on the drop down, one foot slides forward a little bit and one foot's back. I, if you can tell, his one heel is popping out, you can see, which is just a little misalignment there, which is interesting. He rides the board up well, pops up the legs, and then check out his press. Another great example of a press. And then he reaches back for the water but he does something interesting on the entry which i want to go over a little bit as he's going in he he kind of just rolls through the entry a little bit a little arched on the entry and then he doesn't knee save he just kind of seems a little bit lazy on the entry where i would love to see him really knee save hard and it would clean up that entry and he wouldn't look like he's going over because as you can see as he's going in like his line is great falling down great distance from the board, and then he just kind of doesn't knee save properly. I'd be interested to know what he was thinking during that. You can see as he goes underwater, he doesn't really pull the knees that much. It's just slow. Whereas you can see the, the difference with Chris Mears, the guy that's now closest to us. As he goes underwater, his knees are very bent and he's pulling. You can see the difference here of like Chris's, the guy who's close to us now, his knees are very bent versus Pete's on the far side. It's a larger angle with the, with the legs. So just interesting to see that. Here's a, another video. This is no more synchro for a minute. Love this, this drive up and this press. Absolutely incredible. So let's talk about it. Arms up above the head on the drive down for the arm circle. And look at how he's already squatting and then his arms start to swing. Much better timing compared to the earlier divers in this video. Great pop all the way up. Very tight pike position. Touches toes and slides out very well. His head goes back a little bit hard. I wouldn't mind seeing him hold that line a little bit longer. And then he absolutely destroys the entry. It's amazing. He's gotten locked out all the way. Knee saves it pretty perfectly as it was going to roll over and he knee saved that. You can tell. You can even see the swim bubbles coming up. So you know he's swimming properly. Let's watch this through. Another Olympic event for London 2012. This is the females synchro three meter, Team Australia, and it's a solid dive. So let's break it down a little bit. One thing that's interesting here is that their arms are actually quite far back, like they're bent behind a little bit more. I'd like to see them reach up taller as they leave the board and they both bring up the legs great. Touch the feet and then slide and reach back for the entry. Not much to complain about there at all, other than the arms on the end of that arm circle. 
they're just a little bit ugly. And then the girl that's closest to us, her hands actually get behind her feet a little bit on the press rather than coming down and on top of the legs a little bit more. That's more of a preference, I'd say. You can see her knee saving as she goes in. So watch this. Her hands hit, she begins to swim, and as her legs go in, you can literally see her knees bending. Let's go on to Team China. These guys typically do a master class in diving at every world event, and this is no different. Look how tall he is on the board, and as he comes up, it looks actually a bit back. You can see he is pretty stacked there, ankles, hips, shoulders, hands, all in a straight line. The guy closest to us is falling back a little bit more than the guy furthest from us. He's popping up his toes and his hands are even on top of his feet, which shows amazing flexibility. His face is buried in his shins, but here we go on the press. It's so strong that his hands actually come off of his body, which I'm not a huge fan of. The thing is, it's so fast that you don't even see it in real time because he gets to this pressed out position so fast. And let's check out the guy that's closest to us now because he does a textbook knee save. And the time that it took the camera to get underwater, it's a little bit behind their hands hitting. You can see they hit and his arms are already apart. You can see he's probably about at a Y right now and you can see the top of his head. As he's swimming, his head comes up and he arches his back a little bit and knee saves really hard, really well. And he doesn't go very deep. This is um something to take note of. When you do a good knee save, it should have a reaction that keeps you closer to the surface. You don't want to cut it off so fast that you start an early knee save, but if you swim all the way down to the bottom, you're probably not knee saving at all. And this is very situational. Depending on the angle of entry, it's going to change your knee save a little bit. Okay, the last video we have here is of Team Malaysia. I like this back dive the most out of this competition that I watched. Tall on the start, minor crow hop there. Off the takeoff, he is a straight line. He's not leaning back much at all. He's got the his ankles all the way up to his hands completely stacked up. He pops up the legs, touches the toes, and slides along his body to the pressed out position. As opposed to the last video we watched, he pressed very far away from his body. Then he looked back for the water, reaches, and does a really, really great entry. It doesn't 100% disappear but it's very good. And it's also interesting, he only has one swim, swim bubble come up from his left arm. I'm interested to see what happens underwater, if we can tell from his right arm as he goes in. You can just see how great that toe point is and that reach. He gets a little bit archy on the pull towards the water, but it is a textbook back dive. Unfortunately, they don't show the underwater for him, so we won't really know what happens to his right arm as he swims. Maybe we can tell from the aerial shot. You see how one arm, so we're looking at the guy on the left, his left arm swims out to the side immediately and you can see the white air bubbles on the left, but his arm on the right is still carrying all those bubbles with him. Very interesting that that happened that way. And you can compare that to the guy on the right. Both arms go out to the side immediately and you can see the white air bubbles popping up. Both dives were really great. Anyways, I hope that was good for you guys. That is a textbook lesson in the back dive. Uh, right now I'm just gonna compare. I'll show you guys the comparison between the first back dive plus another back dive that's further along in the process. And you can see the difference here of popping up, falling back. So the balance on the board is step one right there. You gotta keep your hips over the board to pop up and get more height. Step two is getting into a deeper pike, touching your hands and feet and pressing, pressing properly. That's a huge difference right there. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.